the fortune-making spirit of today's marketplace, The Rob Black Show. Good day. I'm Rob Black, talking all things financial money, investing, and more. What a difference a day makes unless we slide into a late-day sell-off today. Monday may have been a one-hit wonder that produced big losses for the major indices. Although not at their lows when things ended, there was a little bit of an upswing. But it was a lot of losses yesterday. Why are we having to turn around one day later? Why do our corrections, our pullbacks tend to buy the dip? Well, you could say that we're very Pavlovian. And every time we've bought the dip, it's paid off. In the recent 10 years, minus that one major bear market that lasted two months. Better than expected earnings from the Dow components, IBM, and Travelers helping overall. I could not imagine two individual companies that I want to own less. IBM. No, I, oh, I, well, wait, wait, wait. I could imagine two companies that I want to own less. But those are some dull ones. Relief that the S&P 500 held support yesterday at the 50-day moving average helping out. Chatter that the slowdown concerns related to the Delta variant are overdone. I heard Bill Ackman say something pretty interesting yesterday. And again, keep in mind, he's a uh, hedge fund manager. He's private equity. He is not a doctor. But he said those who don't get the vaccine will just help the herd, the herd immunity because they'll get it. And they'll add to the scenario. It's like, dang, man, it's harsh. Positive commentary out of UBS with respect for demand for Apple's iPhone. UBS upped its price target to $166 for Apple. That's helping out today. Persistence of of low interest rates should not be ignored. Low interest rates are good for stocks. Low interest rates are good for home buying. Low interest rates are good for people with bad credit or high credit. Um, too much credit, high interest rates is the right way of saying that. I'd say it's Monday, but it's not. So today it's going to be all about finishing. Finish him. Remember the video game? Uh, it is what it is. So total housing starts rose 6.3% month over month to a seasonally adjusted annual rate of 1.6 million. That includes building permits declining 5.1% month over month. That's not good. So housing starts are good. Building permits are bad. The permits are a leading indicator. Oh, gosh. Do I even want to get into this? I'll get into it longer on another day when I have less content ready. But a leading indicator means that a permit, you're giving Mr. Contractor uh, 50% down. He goes, will you write me a check for 50%? And I'll start getting permits tomorrow. So he gets the permits, goes to City Hall and finds out City Hall is like, well, it's going to take two months to pull this off. And you're like, what? So that's there. Um, permits, a leading indicator decline across all regions. So it's not just in the West where wildfire activity is taking over. It's not just in the Northeast where flooding is ravaging the states. It's not just in the South. People are dying of COVID on a daily basis. You can't find an excuse to say why the permits are down. Other than higher cost for labor, lumber, last month. A lack of labor, creating the higher cost of labor. And or high selling prices are curtailing buyer demand. So you kind of like put a myriad of them together. 10-year treasury sits at 1.18%. Man. That's one that's really tough to explain, too. It's actually down from 1.16. 1.18 is down because it's buying pressure that puts downward pressure on it. More, not more supply, but more demand creates a, it's tough to explain. Bank stocks could be interesting today as the lower interest rates, the 10-year treasury, it's just kind of, for lack of a better term, since a, Screw you, maybe a middle finger at banks. I don't know how to say that other than say it's it's almost, it's not almost impossible. 
it's difficult to make easy money when interest rates are that low for banks. So that's a little bit of a problem. Jeff Bezos going to space today. The final frontier. Will he make it? Will he not? Do we care? Wouldn't that be great? One of the astronauts dressed as Chewbacca. And did the right stuff walk. You know what I'm talking about. Where all the astronauts are walking down the hall. So Jeff Bezos has completed a space flight on Blue Origin. He did not die. Went a little bit, I don't even know how to say this, relatively speaking. Um, went a little bit higher than Richard Branson. I think I might have to take some uh, edibles if I were to go to space. I don't think I'm going on that trip sober. Just between you and me, the 57-year-old Amazon founder, his brother, and two others stepped out. Chewbacca was on the flight, it turns out, into the new Shepard rocket. Up he went, best day ever, so says Bezos. An 82-year-old female aviation pioneer went up, Mary Wallace, Wallace, Wally Funk. That's a lot to say. And Oliver Damon, the son of a chief executive of a private equity investment firm, one of the runners up at that $28 million charitable auction last month. So there you got it. Did it, done it. Can we stop talking about it? This is going to be a fascinating one because Jeff Bezos, Blue Origin's very much so privately run at this point in time. Where Richard Branson's stock has started falling pretty aggressively after he went to space, uh, Virgin Galactic. So it's almost like, yeah, we get that you had the greatest hype machine ever. Literally, the whole world was watching when Branson did it. Not so much on Musk. I don't know why that is, but Virgin Galactic down seven and a half percent today, fifty-two week high. Is it sixty-two dollars? It's at. $30 essentially at this point in time. Um, so the day they went into space was the day, not the day they went into space, but the build up to the space launch. Buy on the rumor, sell on the news is what played out with Virgin Galactic. Other stories of note today. I don't think we have to hit on that 10 year treasure. I think I've said that well enough. But uh, NVIDIA. A little bit of a laggard after being one of the key outperformers yesterday. Um, some days you watch when the stock market falls apart and you see like 99 out of the top 100 stocks are down. And you're like, I wonder which one's up. That kind of happened yesterday. And it was in video where you're like, what happened and why is that that? Uh, one thing I've noticed about GPU pricing, graphic processing units, it is trending lower. So that should bode poorly for NVIDIA. I'm not saying that well. But that's one metric, one thing that I look at. Thanks for listening to the show. I have a brand new website, Rob Black Show. Rob Black Show. Uh, it's got this podcast right on the front page. Well, not right on the front. Yeah, it's right on the front page. But it won't be there after the show is slightly over. But it's getting out faster and faster each and every day. The Rob Black Show is brought to you by EP Wealth. Learn more about EP's unique approach to managing wealth at robblackshow.com. So let me show you how this show works. I really like my producer. He's kind of like a little brother. I'm a little bit older, and he's going through some of the same life scenarios that I went through at the same age. So I like it. It's relatable. Um, we were just talking about driverless cars. And like, if there's a sideshow in Oakland, would a driverless car be able to figure it out? And the answer is yes. So Waymo, whatever happened to Waymo? I can tell you, I can give you a pretty interesting update on Waymo. But Waymo has been driving driverless cars in Arizona on a regular basis now for a long period of time. And you can take a taxi ride and you can book it now if you want to. Online, you don't want to tend to book online. You want to tend to book through the app when you get there because the cab service has real drivers that are there and, and taxis without drivers. So I know someone who did it for basically five days in a row, just kind of get the experience down. Uh, the service is called Waymo One. It's a robo-taxi service. It hit the general public in December 2018. If you haven't been, you don't know about it, into, into Arizona. They've got a whole Arizona fleet, Chrysler Pacifica hybrid minivans, uh, probably about 300 of them. One of them runs 24-7, or they all run 24-7. 
providing hundreds of weekly rides across a 50 mile square swath of Phoenix. So that's slightly larger than San Francisco, but it's fair to say that Phoenix doesn't have the congestion. And it's really funny in second grade, I didn't know the difference between congestion and constipation. And I liked the school nurse had a crush on her. So I'd raise my hand and the teacher would say, what is it today, Rob? And I'd say, my nose is constipated. And she thought that was the funniest damn thing she ever heard. So she'd let me go. <laughs> So Waymo's testing zone is double the ride hailing area. Um, so don't prearrange the rides with Waymo is what my friend says. Book directly through the public facing app. Um, and you'll get to like experience life without a driver. Um, you have to be inside the service area. There's a lot of rules. You have to input the distance or it inputs the distance from point A to point B. So it's not going to take you like to 15 different destinations all within that map. Waymo estimates ETA is typically range between five and 10 minutes, but the rush hour demand could be a little bit longer. Um, in this case, he told me he once ordered uh, a Waymo taxi at 5.30 and it took about half an hour. Another person that he was standing next to said it took about 50 minutes. There's confetti when you book a ride, like Robin Hood on the app. You can change the two-letter code and color on your car's windshield display ID. So you can kind of help find the vehicle, I guess. The app will tell you when it's a red light and as soon as it turns green, so does the animation. Um, so you can wait for it and you can kind of watch it coming to you. And that's kind of cool. Do you remember the first time you watched an Uber come to you? Um, a lot of excitement and human hubris. Things like not buckling your seatbelt. Uh, people get overwhelmed in their first time in a driverless vehicle, he said. There's an in-car camera, which will bring up a very good question in the 21st century about privacy, especially since Google's track record on privacy is not great. So you've entrusted your life to a machine. He gets in the back of a Waymo, and he, he showed me a picture on his phone. It's fantastic. There's a steering wheel in front of him, and it's driving, and it's kind of like – um, have you been in a Tesla and seen the self-driving software? It shows the lane, the vehicles. It shows all four lanes that you're driving on. Maybe it's two-lane highway. You see two lanes your side, two lanes their side. But it shows you a green tracking beam that your Waymo cab is following. He said it refers to starting a ride as it comes to life. It proceeds cautiously through any parking lot. Drivers more immediately um, aggressive would pose a challenge to it, but it's not going to do a challenge to you. He was surprised. It's not going to put you in danger. He was surprised at how slow it took a 90-degree turn. So he said you find yourself like it goes faster on, on the bigger roads. It goes slower in the parking lots and um, congested areas. He expected the vehicle to treat the gas pedal like a driving school student, but no, it accelerated to 45 fast. He said he was like, okay, here we go. Now if the driverless car goes onto a glitch and starts doing left turn, right turn, left turn, right turn, and sm smashes into a wall, he's a dead man because 45 miles per hour into a brick wall, you're probably not going to live. He loved the braking of the system. So he loved the acceleration, loved the braking. He said the parking lot was a little bit too slow or safe which is a good thing, I think, early on in this process. Um, he said the jerking of the brakes never really happened. There was no oopsies by the machine. The robo, the robo driver moves with ebbs and flows of surrounding traffic. It doesn't tailgate, nor does it maintain seven car links, so it's at a relatively right distance, but it's not tailgating. It weaves between lanes fine. It doesn't change unnecessarily. The system plans longer routes. This is what I found really interesting. The Waymo taxi will do a longer route to get you to your destination if it feels that it can get away from, like go through a calmer neighborhood versus a more crowded intersection. So it's trying to avoid bustling faster roadways for slower, safer areas. And again, this is not programmed in. This is him saying, I want to go from point A to point B to point C. 
and that's not program. It's not an automatic route like what's happening as the first level or the second level. I think of autonomous driving. Third level is you can really pick a destination; it'll take you there. Final report. Um, he walked in front of a vehicle to see how it would react, and it didn't fall for his trap. It stopped. So emergency vehicles where it has to deal with trucks and sirens, um, it pulls off to the side like it's supposed to. A lot of feedback, but his ultimate response was, we're pretty darn close. It's a pretty smooth ride. Um, You can't talk to it, even though you want to. Like, uh, take a turn here. (laughs) Backseat driver mode disabled. But Waymo recently raised $2.5 billion. Autonomous driving is sooner than later on a lot of levels. On a commercial taxi level, probably before you should be in the backseat of your Tesla with your hands off the wheel. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. Resources to help you manage your money. Visit robblackshow.com. That's robblackshow.com. get in a lot of trouble with this one joel olstein celebrity pastor and author is drawing ire over a picture on twitter of his ferrari um it's a three hundred twenty-five thousand dollar vehicle and a lot of people on twitter are saying tax the churches if a pastor could run with that kind of ride hashtag tax the churches is a thing trending on Twitter then there's you kind of get broadcast television you get celebrity worshipers you get a salary get royalties from a cadre of best selling books and you go what am I seeing here what is this in front of me but Churches pay little taxes in the United States. And this is a big, st- it's not a big story, but it's a Twitter story. And I found it kind of interesting, uh, especially because the $325,000 Ferrari, which I was having a conversation with the CFP yesterday and uh, materialism versus lack of materialism kind of was the vein of the thought. When is enough enough? A $400,000 Ferrari? I don't get it, but that's me. Um, Ferrari 458 Italia, for those who want to look it up. It looks pretty. You know, I saw one business executive. He likes to put his office in the middle of really nice cars. So he drives his car up, parks it in a circle of other cars, and he sits in a desk between six other cars and looks at the beauty of them all day long while he's working. Some people like oceanfront views some people like views of really nice cars and that's all i have to say about that is that not kind of like that's peculiar okay it would be like me going on a first date and go yeah so uh, i got something to tell you steph yes what is it you love me no 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 not that steph what i have to tell you is um i wasn't it funny i just use a Non-male, non-female name, Steph. Um, Could be binary. And me saying, yeah, by the way, I have a bed. And uh," and she goes, yes, 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 tell me more. And I I park it in between. I I sleep in between six parked Ferraris. I like to wake up and dream of Ferraris. And boom, there they are. Okay. Microsoft is in the news today. Whoa, 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 wait. Yeah. Delta variant now accounts for 83% of all sequenced COVID cases in the United States. Isn't that crazy how that's been working? Where we once had one version, just the COVID-19, and that bastardized to the, another version, which bastardized to another version, which bastardized to another version. And the old versions die off, right? Because only the strong shall survive. Is that one of the first things we learned in biology as a child? It's a dramatic increase and governors like the governor of New Jersey says, if you want to continue eating in restaurants, you better mask up and vax up because I will pull that from you. And I look at the calendar. I'm like, please don't pull it. This No, please don't. Please don't. So I, I feel that threat. And especially as an investor who 
basically forms a lot of my opinion out of the strength of the U.S. economy and, and capitalism. Tokyo 2020 chief said it's not too late to rule out 11th hour cancellation of the Olympics. Um, it's starting on Friday, dude. You've got three days, but there's been a big spike in Japan. Just like we've heard about a big spike in Malaysia, just like we've heard a big spike in Australia. We've heard about a big looming spike in the UK. We've seen the cases in the United States go higher. Now, these are smaller numbers than last year. And maybe Bill Ackman's right. Maybe this is how we achieve herd immunity of just let the sick, let, let the unvaccinated get sick and they'll join the group of people who have antibodies. Or they'll die. Or they'll let it mutate into another form. So not a scientist. But the first major test of how an Olympics can be held in the midst of a pandemic is going to be starting with a men's soccer tournament when Japan faces a South Africa side that's going to struggle to have 11 players on the pitch. That's crazy. Why are we doing this? Why are we pretending the Olympics are important when South Africa has a team in the Olympics and they can't even get 20 healthy people to the games? Two members of Mexico's Olympic baseball team tested positive at a team hotel before their departure. I give you the names, but I'm really not good with foreign names. And it always sounds like this. Hector Velasquez, that's easy. Sammy Solis or Sammy Soli? Sammy Solis. Kinji Shibuya, former director of the Institute of Population Health at King's College London. Thinks the whole system's kind of broken already, the bubble. 68% of respondents in Japan said they don't want the Olympics. That's a lot of people. Keep in mind the United States, when we vote for president, we're like maybe 52% versus 48 or 51 versus 48 and the other 1% vote for Mickey Mouse. 68% of the people in Japan don't want the Olympics. Is that interesting? No. 800-516-1220 to get your calls on the air. If you ever want to record a voice memo and email me, Rob at Rob Black Show, with a question, I would like it. One of the big stories, and I heard CFP Chad Burton talk about this yesterday, and it just kind of struck me as funny financial planning. It's financial planning, but it's kind of it shows you how funny it can be, where he, he talked about student loan debt cancellation. And he goes, if you have a kid who has a student loan, you may not want to pay it off until after Biden gets out of office. I'm summing up. I'm paraphrasing. I'm not doing the right thing. But it's kind of funny, right? Like if you pay off your debt and then they wipe out all student debt, like, oh. But I feel bad because I paid off my debt some 30 years ago. I'm like, what do you mean you're paying off other people's debt? You didn't pay off mine. Um, listen to this crazy stuff. Between the age groups of 35 and 49 and 50 and 61, there's a big balance of student debt. And you would think, like, how is that possible? How does a 50 to 61-year-old have big student debt? Well, it's their kids, right? But same with the 35 to 49, which is not their kids. They're the ones who are probably carrying their own debt at this point in time. Because I paid off my student debt right around 32, 33, 34, 35 in that range. The average balance right now is $42,290. Isn't that kind of interesting that the parents, for lack of a better word, people 50 to 61? My neighbor has two kids in college. Great kids, by the way. You know, sometimes you'll hear me mention people and I won't say their names and I'll kind of throw them under the bus. I won't mention his name, but he's got two great kids and he did it kind of interesting. Gave me some parenting advice that I think was probably the best parenting advice I ever got. He said, steer your kids away from the kids that you don't want to play with. <laughs> I'm like, okay, what do you mean? He's like, well, if Joey down the street smokes and you don't want your kid to play with a smoker, then tell your kid, we're going bowling tonight as a family. <laughs> and you can now go to a publicly traded bowling alley. He didn't quite say it like that, but I think that was pretty good advice where you're going to know people when you have kids that. You're going to know them from your gym, your sports clubs, 
whether it's the kids club that they play on or the gym that you work out at and their school, it's a pretty small world. But how do you feel about that level of debt for both parents and ultimately millennials? So older millennials, but 50 to 61, $42,290, 35 to 49, 42,000. Two hundred ninety, uh, forty-two thousand three hundred seventy-three. So difference of showcase showdown. What is that? Oh, I don't want to do the math too early. Eighty bucks. Virgin Galactic down seven and a half percent today. The day that Elon Musk goes into space and doesn't die. Maybe that's why Virgin Galactic's down. Otherwise, it's all about space tourism, and you start looking at the different. Business models, and I think Elon Musk has the best one. I think when you send people into space for space tourism, and it's kind of interesting when you read about this stuff, some of the words that you'll learn. Uh, Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic calls it suborbital tourism. Um, whereas SpaceX, Elon Musk's company, wants to do what's called orbital tourism. Suborbital, orbital. And you're like, oh, got it. So Branson's just taking up on a fast plane ride. Whereas you get to spin around part of the world and maybe the whole world with Elon Musk, Blue Origin. Taking a look at the market today. Yesterday was a bloody day on Wall Street. Today, less bloody. In fact, it's quite nice. S&P 500 is up 50 points. The Dow's up 500 points. The Nasdaq's up 122. Nowhere near the losses yet. Well, starting to get near the losses yesterday. Um, but yesterday was very dramatic on the downside. Square, Jack Dorsey's company that he actually cares about and loves and nurtures, unlike Twitter, has launched a banking business. The innovation coming out of Square is quadruple the innovation that's coming out of Twitter. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter, Rob Black Show, YouTube, Rob Black Show. Brand new website with a lot of downloads that are free. The first time ever I've got a website to be proud of. Check it out at robblackshow.com. Don't miss an episode of The Rob Black Show. Subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Sometimes I like to write down kind of stupid thoughts to see if they'll ever fly on the air. simple business plan of most companies is one, found a company, two, raise money, three, do your thing, four, make money, five, pay some of the founders, pay some of the managers for their entrepreneurial vision early on, six, eventually the original thing stops being profitable, seven, go back to step five. Um, Jeff Bezos once said Amazon will eventually fail I love that I actually think that's pretty cool um, to know that all things die as an investor it's pretty important Let me, this is not a great example because there's first mover incumbent status. And that's what Richard Branson, Elon Musk, and Jeff Bezos are trying to do. They don't really care about the space tourism side of it. I mean, it's tough to say that they don't care. But that's half the opportunity. Space cargo is the other half, which I know you're saying space cargo. Yeah, like trucks in space. But if I were Hilton, I would certainly think about starting to book maybe a hotel, build a hotel down in Space City, down in New Mexico. If I were Delta, I would think about, hey, if you get a bazillion miles, we'll send you to space for free. Like, there's going to be tie-ins with the industry, and it's not going to stop. And again, all the tourist side of it goes to fund getting the cost down so they can get the cargo up in space which is where I think Musk is way ahead of Branson and Bezos. 
what else is there? Uh, as far as big stories go, I'm trying to find a good one. There's low appetite. I thought this was cute when I wrote this down yesterday at lunch. There's low appetite for restaurant work. I thought I was being cute. But you know how we keep hearing the jolts, the job openings? is showing, are we at full employment or not? And a lot of people don't want to go back to service jobs. If you were to win the lottery, would you tell friends and family? I've often thought about this, and my answer is I would not. Um, I believe I'm not very materialistic. I think you can ask my producer if you ever see him in public. He'll say what you get with Rob on the air is what he does during the commercials as well. Uh, thank you. That's very kind of you. But money kind of corrupts people. You see it in politicians, obviously. But if I were to win, say, $100 million in a lottery, even though I don't play the lottery, that would make it even more special. I would probably get into state planning trust attorney and figure out ways to squirrel it into charities that I believe in. A lot of things are changing. Remember how I said things change and how the incumbent first mover of space is going to be all important. No one really can collect can. Um, why am I dropping the word? No one can really catch. Boy, that was way too easy of a word. What Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and Richard Branson are doing. They've already dumped billions of dollars into this. That first mover advantage, if there's space tourism and if there's space cargo, they're going to win. That's the idea. And combined over a 10-year period, it could be an $800 billion industry to beat up between three companies. But then you start looking at the market cap. You start looking at the cost. Um, I bring it up because first mover, sometimes you, you think it is enough, but it's not. Do you remember MySpace? I guess what AOL was, it became, once it became mom was on and dad was on in there, you've got mail coming from their bedroom. <laughs> it's better than, I guess, you know, sexy noises, right? But once you started hearing mom and dad getting it on, you got mail, people started going to MySpace, kids. Is MySpace even around today? If it is, don't tell me. I don't care. Don't let the facts stand in the way of a good story. Had they come public, would they have been the Facebook? Would they have been the first mover who had hundreds of millions of dollars, billions of dollars that Zuckerberg would never have had access to? Uh, Warren Buffett said recently he's resigning as trustee of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. One of the things that I really dug about his commentary when he did that, because I wrote this down as a note to get to, he said, I still relish being on the field and carrying the ball, but I'm clearly playing in a game that, for me, has moved past the fourth quarter and ended to overtime. Acknowledging his own death and his, his leaving of business. The day Bill Gates dies, or I'm sorry, oh, 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 uh, that was a slip. The day Warren Buffett dies, I will probably take a day off from work, or at least when the final bell sounds. All born. He's helped create a network of wealth for many Americans with the concept of investing can get you ahead. At one point, he was the richest man in the world, and he started off as a very, very lower middle class human being. And he made his wealth by investing. He made his wealth by investing his cash that he was investing. He made his wealth by investing the cash that his cash was like. He just kept doing what he did. I think that's worthy of note. Um, should I, and I'll ask a quick poll as we end this hour, drop me an email, Robert, Rob Black Show com. a quick poll is how much do you need to retire? Oftentimes on this show, it's easy to talk about how to retire with $1 million, but I don't think $1 million is a lot of money for upper middle class Americans. If you're lower middle class, it's a ton of money. Drop me an email, your thoughts on $1 million, one to $4 million, or $5 million. And you have to include your spouse in that number. And is that pre-tax or post-tax? Big differences, especially where you live in retirement. That's why Florida and Arizona do so well. Find me online at Rob Black Show. I'd love some feedback, Rob at robblackshow.com. 
Listen to The Rob Black Show on your Alexa or Google Play device. Just say, listen to The Rob Black Show.